programmers welcome to my very first scratch tutorial video if you don't know who i am i am called nami on the internet that's my internet nickname but my real life name is actually sai i have a youtube channel called long arms creation and i also have a facebook page called it's me nami and i make a lot of vlogs on there sharing my thoughts about movies i've watched or stories i've read or even articles i've read those are my main passions uh, watching movies and reading but not that type of entertainment i also love writing stories and articles i love programming and i also love making vlogs now since i love vlogging and programming I decided I might do a tutorial series on this program called Scratch. For people who don't know what Scratch is, let's just search up Scratch real quick. Now, I'm going to teach you how to spell Scratch. Scratch, by the way, does not mean scratching your skin. That's something entirely different. So, Scratch, you have to type in S C R A T C H. And if you get the other like dot MIT dot edu, you don't actually have to put that because we are going to look at a little bit of the information. So Scratch is a block based visual programming language and website targeted primarily at children. So as you can see, this is for children. It's aimed at people from 6 to 18 years old. But the thing is, anyone can do this actually even if you're 60 years old or if you're a three-year-old child you will understand this scratch is such a fun place um so this is basically what scratch is i'm just going to remind it another time for you s c r a t c h so s c r a t c h Remind that. I mean, here it says score or mark the surface of something with a sharper pointed object. I mean, that's what the usual scratch word means, but we're going to program using scratch. We're not going to do something stupid. Now, as you can see, my whole life is dedicated to scratch because um, I have something related to <laughs> scratch in my safari bookmarks. I also have seen all the pages of scratch. See, I love scratch. Um, it's what I dedicate almost 50% of my usual day to. It's such a fun community. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you how to use it. Now you can always just, if you want to use Scratch, you, ju you could just have to click here and open up the page. But you c you can do that. Also, I'm going to sign out of my account because that's going to be there's going to be some stuff on there that is a little advanced, and I'll explain to you what they are in the future. So you can always just open it like this if you prefer that. Always search up Scratch and then put it. But you can do that first. Let's actually go here like scratch i already told you what the spelling of scratch is and then you dot mit dot yadu another time dot m i t dot e d u now mit stands for massachusetts Te institute of technology which means Scratch was made by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, but it wasn't exactly made by the college itself, I mean university. It's actually created by a little department in it called the Lifelong Kindergarten Group. Ooh, and the people there actually aim for teaching programming and other creative digital stuff to, new, to children who are under the age of six or above the age of six, or even people who are really, really old. So anyways, that's what Scratch is. It was uh, released to the public on way back in 2007, so it's actually very old. But the latest version of Scratch is actually pretty cool. So as you can come here, you'll see stuff like create stories, games, and animation, share with others around the world. As you can see, it's giving us a very kind introduction. I don't have even have to say anything. You can start creating immediately, but the problem is you can't just do this without having an account. And we'll also not do anything yet. So what we want to do is, you can either click on this join button. I mean, yeah, that's the easiest way. Or if you go back to Scratch, you can also click here to start making an account. So once you go here, you might want to create your own username. Now, you can't use the username that someone else has. Like, you can't say numbazaking01, which is my current username on Scratch. If you said that, it would say username taken. Try another. It's, it works like uh, a lot of other websites. In some websites, they allow you to make the same usernames, but because you cannot include spaces in your usernames, um, yeah, that's not going to work. Usernames can't have spaces, as you can see. So 
you can't set your username to hatman which is kind of depressing but let's just move on so we're going to set it to it's me nami okay that's not taken good news guys it's not taken now make your password but don't tell this to anybody i mean anybody don't tell it to anybody except for your family maybe because you can trust your family but don't tell it to anybody else maybe to very close friends or family members but this is so important because if a hacker unlocks access to your account then they can basically delete all the stuff you've made change your personal information and basically they can expose you on scratch to other people and we don't want that to happen so make a very secured um um password now make sure your password does make sense and it's easy to remember i'm just going to make my password something really weird i'm not i'm going to turn off show password and i'm going to make it something really weird because since this is on video i mean i mean sure safari is giving me a free one but if safari gives you a free one don't accept it guys because safari safari gives something really weird and that doesn't tell Okay, wow. I don't th- I've been on scratch for so long and I don't know. You know what, guys? Let's just be a little real here. I'm just going to make a normal password, I guess, even though that's kind of boring. But anyways, we set our password. Now it will ask you in which country you live. Now remember that scratch does not steal any of your personal information. It just takes this info, doesn't even give it to the main creators of scratch. It just uses this info. to show other people what you are but countries you don't actually have to set it to what country you're actually in it does show you it does show other people what you're in but if you don't want to show them what um country you're in you can always just set it to antarctica and as you all know and no one lives in antarctica so y- no one will believe you and nobody will just know your country unless you mention it now see bur- Where, when were you born we will keep this information private now as you can see it says this helps us understand the age age range of people who use scratch we use this to confirm account ownership if you contact our team this information will not be made public on your account so this information will not be made public on our account they just use it to see what the age range is of people using scratch i'll get to the statistics and stuff in another video but now let's just talk about this I was born on October 29 um next now here you can choose your number now you can set it to male or female you could set it to non binary or if you you can always put another gender so for example say you are uh, say you are actually do, uh, running this account with a brother or sister you cannot run an account if it's two people running it so for example if it's you and your friend it's not allowed but if it's only allowed if you're doing it with a family member so don't actually do that just only do shared accounts with a fam- family members don't do it with friends because that's not that's strictly not allowed on scratch so don't actually do that Now as you can see scratch welcomes people of all genders so if you're like something different than male or female or non binary you can freely put that in there's nothing to worry about they won't expose you as you can see here too we will keep this information private so um i'm going to set mine to male because i am obviously a male you can also prefer not to say if you don't want to reveal it your email now i am actually I mean I guess um you can type in your email and um, you can type in your email and then you can I you can choose here if you want to receive emails from the scratch team about project ideas events and more and you c- by creating an account you should also acknowledge the privacy policy in terms of use now don't actually read these yourself because those are going to be a little confusing but make sure your parents read them or if you are a parent then you should definitely read them i know it's extremely long and these privacy policies are actually not really important and the privacy policy basically says about how many moderators there are and how much cookies there are y- this is not really that important okay because I- they're just saying that they will keep you extremely safe and that that they won't do anything that you don't like about your personal information 
And here on Scratch Terms of Use, these Terms of Use constitute an agreement between you and the Scratch team. Yeah, so these you actually have to read because these, these are the terms for using Scratch. You have to follow these rules if you're going to use Scratch. Now, I'll get to more rules later. For now, I'm just going to get and create my account. I'm not going to receive emails from the Scratch team. I don't want that. And we actually have an account now. Save, no, don't save your password. It's not, I mean, it, I mean, I'm going to let you do it if you want to do it, but it's not really necessary. As you can see, we've created a new account. You can go to your profile. You can go to my stuff. Now, you might want to click on profile. And as you can see, I set my country to Antarctic, Antarctica. I actually should have set it to Belgium, but I forgot. Now, just set it to, now set your description to something simple that describes yourself. So set it to something like, hi. I'm just going to set it to something simple. Um... I mean, it does have a character limit. Now, okay. Hi, my name is Nami. I am a person that gives out <laughs> scratch tutorials. Now, you can put anything here, all right? If you wish to not do anything, you can just do not anything. And it'll just be empty like this. You can also change it to hamburger if you wish to tell other people that you like hamburgers. I mean... I wouldn't recommend it, but you can put hamburger if you want. And as you can see, though, you can't comment to people and stuff, but we'll get to that later. Right now, all we have to do is see what we can do with this account. So as you can see, we have my stuff. Um, unfortunately, it takes scratch is a bit slow these days. Because unfortunately, um, due to do, due to the crisis going on right now, most uh, like there are 54 million people on Scratch and about 50 percent, which is about 25 million, are online. So that's basically so many people just online on Scratch, and that's making the site very very slow. But as you can see, we have my stuff. We don't have any projects yet. Um, my stuff. Uh, we don't have any projects yet, but we will get to that very, very soon. I'll teach you guys very basic stuff very soon. Here you can change your country if you like. I, I'm going to change it to Belgium because that's what my actual place is. You can change your password here, and you can change your email here too. So you can do all of that. And when you go here, you can save my changes so that the changes you made saves. Now mine is still Antarctica. I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> a mine can see or Antarctica people can think that I am a penguin. <laughs> so, first of all, you can't connect with the community right now, like I said before, because if I go to the welcoming community, which is basically a place where you can meet up with other scratchers and say, hey, look, I'm a new person. Can you help me out? And then people will help me out. It's a very nice area. Now, it's taking a while to load because, you know, like I said, but... You can't actually comment anywhere right now. And if you're asking why I, why you can't comment anywhere, you've set your email, right? You've set your email. But the thing is, you haven't actually confirmed it. So to, to connect with the community, you actually have to go to Gmail. Now, I think the Scratch Welcoming Community has opened. As you can see, it has 3,000. 345,075 comments. I mean, this is a very active studio because it just says you that you have to go there. But anyways, let's just log in into our account. Um, yeah, I'm just going to use my touch ID and fingerprint. So, now that we're in here, you can actually, you're actually going to get a confirm your scratch account email. And then you can do confirm my account. Just click on that. Wow, I just opted out. And if you click on here, for some reason, everything is loading slow. I have no idea why that's happening. Anyways, meanwhile, this loads. Let's actually... Okay, it's loaded. And now, you can actually com uh, connect with the community now that you have confirmed your email address. But before we do any of that, let's make our very first project. It's the moment you guys have all been waiting for. I know you guys are all screaming. Hey, Nami, Nami, I want to make my very first project. I want to make my game. Listen, before we make a true game, like a simulator with fighting zombies and all that stuff, 
we gotta do something very simple oh oh i forgot a very important thing actually um i i wanted to show you guys this very short com short community guideline okay scratch community guidelines we need everyone's help to keep scratch a friendly and creative community where people with different backgrounds and interests feel welcome be respectful when sharing projects or ma posting comments remember that people of many different ages and backgrounds will see what you've shared so when you're making a project don't say something like girls are bad because there are a lot of girls on scratch and you know it's basically not uh, respectful and i'm warning you you could get banned from scratch if someone reports your project to a moderator so definitely don't do that be constructive when commenting on others projects say something you like about it or offer suggestions so don't say something like um, this project is trash at least say something good like um I personally dislike this project and then you can suggest a couple of things that can improve it and always remember to add no offense if you said I personally dislike a project because in scratch if you're not respectful I mean maybe this seems kind of bossy but it's res it, you need to be respectful because there are 54 million people in scratch of different backgrounds share you are free to remix projects ideas ima images or anything else you find on scratch and anything anyone can use anything that you share be sure to give credit when you remix so they're basically saying that a user can freely remix your project without stuff like copyright or hey you copied my project i mean they can't i mean it's not allowed that a person like really like copies your project and doesn't make and it makes zero changes but if they make some changes like improve a button and then they make it like super good project then it's allowed all right so when you share a project anyone can use it for their own stuff so but those people have to give credits or they will get an alert or they could possibly get banned so that's what share is all about keep personal info private very very important for safety reasons, don't give out any information that could be used for private communication, such as real last names, phone numbers, addresses, email addresses, link to social media sites or websites with unmoderated chats. So don't give out your email addresses, phone numbers, or your house address or real last names. Why, you might be asking. Say you give out your address and some kidnapper or person who does child abuse or something like that comes it and they just come to your house and do something to your family or yourself or someone could be doing something like they could get your phone number or they could get your email address and then they could trick you into you giving your password and then they could get into your account and do stuff and also remember to not give any links to social media sites because social media sites contain bad words and since it's a kid website we don't want to teach them stuff like that or website with unmoderated chat so basically where there are new no moderators checking if the chat is bad um scratch is not a toxic site so don't actually link to places where it's extremely toxic be honest don't try to impersonate other scratches spread rumors or others try to trick the community now this is where a couple of people actually go wrong don't actually think this means that you have to be honest about where you live or what your password is the only thing you have to be honest about is about that you're not like impersonating a famous scratcher spread false rumors or otherwise start tricking the community you don't have to do something like in scratch but anything related to real life you can actually talk about Help keep the site friendly. If you think a project or comment is mean, insulting, too violent, or otherwise inappropriate, click report to let us know about it. Now, let the Scratch team know if um, if someone is being disrespectful or or like saying that genders are bad, like girls are bad, then you have to report them and make sure that they get moderated. Scratch welcomes people of all ages, races, ethnicities, I don't know what that means, religions, abilities, sexual orientations, and gender identities. And then there's a cute image of all the characters of Scratch all smiling at you. So that's the community guidelines. It's really important when you're making a project. But anyways, speaking of projects, let's get to the moment you have all been waiting for. How should you program on Scratch? Now, first of all, click on your username here in the corner, in the top right corner, and you click on My Stuff. 
And once you go here, you see you have this empty area. I've showed you this before, but I'm just saying so that it's fixed in your head. So remember, click here and click on my stuff. And then you have to click on plus new project. And once this place loads up, you can actually do a lot of stuff here. As you can see, you have a little scratch cat here. You can move him around. This is called scratch cat, by the way. He is the main mascot or sprite. They call it on scratch. As you can see, it's sprite one. You can rename him to cat or scratch cat or hamburger or whatever. Just, I'm going to set it to scratch cat. And once you set him to scratch cat, you can basically see that you can move him around and do stuff with him. But that's not going to help us. Starting a project, you have to click on green flag to start a project, but we don't have any code, so nothing will happen. To stop a project, you have to click on the red button. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of these categories here, motion, looks, sounds, sound, events, control, sensing, operators, variables, and lastly, my blood, excuse me. And as you can see, there are a lot of stuff here. But you won't actually understand all of these right now. It'll be like, go to random position. What does that mean? Well, go to random position basically means that your sprite is going to go to a random position. But that's not important right now. I just told you because you asked me to do that. But let's bring our scratch cat back to the center. And today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make an extremely simple race game. It's very simple. Now, a race game is not going to be random. Let's actually call our project race game. It's not going to be it's not going to be like random. It's not like one character is going to randomly go because that's already a little advanced, guys. You guys are new and you obviously want a simple thing. But today, I'm going to be teaching you guys something very, very easy, which is a fixed race, which means you know beforehand, beforehand who wins because you've set the code so that one person wins. Now, you only have scratch catch. You want to add a, another contestant to your race game, but how am I supposed to do that? First thing, you have to bring your mouse to this little cat icon in the, in the bottom, bottom right corner of the screen, and you have to hover over that. Now, if your mouse is like this little text sign, then that won't work. And on some computers, you have to click on it, which is kind of annoying. But when you click on it, as you can see, you can click on it. And then you come in this giant area full of sprites. If you want to get out of this giant area, you can always just click on back here in the top left corner. And then you're going back to your usual area. Stupid Mac. It's really, no, I'm no offense against Mac, but it just zooms in like this sometimes, you know, and it's very annoying. Oh my god, why isn't this working? Wow. I'm making it worse. Why is this not working? This is ruining the video. Please work. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is, I'm not going to be able to record this anymore if this is how it's going to behave. Uh, okay, thank god. Hopefully it's not like that again because that was really, really annoying. What, what just happened there? That was very weird. But anyways, let's not talk about that. As you can see, we have to go in here, hover, click on it, and then you have to look for a sprite that's actually interesting for you. So look for something like bat or basketball. I'm going to search a bear. Okay, we have bear right over there. Surprising. Now, as we all know, cats are way faster than bears. So obviously, our cat is going to win the race. No, many of you probably have questions. How do I make the project run and I click on the green flag? Because now when I get a block and do this, it moves in steps. But when I click on the green flag, nothing happens. Well, let's get to that. First of all, move 10 steps is what you need to know about. Move 10 steps basically means that you move your um, pro your, your character ten by 10 steps. You move it, you move it, you move it. But how about... You want to click on the project and it moves. Now, first of all, go to events because this is a very important area. As you can see, there are many areas here. When green flag clicked, when space key pressed, when this part clicked. But you're not actually going to think about all of these other ones. For now, we're just going to take this when green flag clicked. And what this basically does is it runs a code when you click on the green flag. So any code under this when green flag click will run after this. So now if you go to move 10 steps and put it under this when cl flag click, then you'll actually be able to do this. And it just keeps going on. And that's actually what we need right now. And you can actually copy the code. You can click on duplicate. 
and then you will have another cover and then you want to put it in your bear as well so you want to drag it over to you have to drag your cover and you want to insert it in bear I mean look okay yeah it's already in bear actually it's as you can see we've already put in it in bear and and now that it's in bear actually we have two times because if we put it in two times we'll get rid of this duplicate here because we don't want it to run twice when you click the green flag and now we have the score in bear too we have it in scratch cat and bear now they both run 10 steps but they're all going at the same speed how do i make one not move move slower and one uh, the other one move faster so what you basically have to do is scratch cat should move 20 steps because he's a cat and he's faster and bear should go 10 steps so when then you do it as you can ski scratch cat is actually going way faster and in the end he reaches the end so you're gonna do the same but the thing is you can't actually click to make the project end you want uh, to go automatically until they reach the end so how many times do you have to click to make scratch cat reach the end you need to see that so we have to make a, a like a system that allows us to know. so let's actually start with berry one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six so it takes him twenty six times to go there so we remember the number twenty six and then with scratch cat it takes one two three no wait that was actually not accurate one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen so we don't want the person playing your game to click the click on the flag 26 times or 16 times to make this code run so what you want to do is you're going to go to control and as you can see there's this repeat code and what you want to do here is you want to insert your code in here and you want to change since you're in bear since you're in scratch cat now you have to change that to 16 I, I think it's 16 I'm not really sure but and here you have to do 26 so when you put this in there and you keep the two sprites then they'll actually automatically go as you can see but the thing is we want him to actually stop faster because the thing is we don't actually want him to win the race you know we want scratch cat to win the race so let's put those play things back where they're supposed to be but they ran off oh no okay, okay now they're back now, as you can see bear doesn't actually reach the end but we want to make him stay way behind because we want him to lose he's the bad boy out here and um, because bears get humans so now as you can see bear actually doesn't reach the end but anyways that is a race game complete it's really that simple you just finished your very first race game and you don't even know about it now in the, for now if you want them to go back if you want these characters to go back then you actually have to drag them back to where they were and then you have to make them go again but there's no other way guys i will actually teach you how to make them go back but that's already a little advanced i'll teach you that in the next video because next video we're going to be going over something that seems advanced but actually it's super easy guys so make sure to say stay tuned for that because it's a very simple thing i'm just going to give you a little sneak peek we're going to be talking about these blocks so the all of these all of these with the x and y so right i know it seems very complicated what are these x and y stuff but they are a vital part to scratch and if you don't know what they are then you're not going to get to program very well on scratch i'm just saying so hopefully you enjoyed this video i i really really hope that you learned something with from this because i worked really really hard on this video a lot of clips went wrong and i made them all over again i spent a lot of time on this video at trying to teach you guys how to make your very first scratch race game so hopefully you enjoyed this video make sure to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel for more scratch tutorials and maybe i'll be coming back with more programming uh, language tutorials who knows maybe i'll become better in some other programming language as well but anyways hopefully you enjoyed this video please remember to like share and subscribe and it's me nami